Welcome to the welcome to the metrics meeting for August first, twenty twenty four. Today is the anniversary of MTV launching onto the air. Um, and uh, so Matt, uh, while he was here, suggested that we take a look at this one metric revision. Um, I don't know if anybody can see what's here, but effectively in the starter viability model, they discuss how keeping up with security updates or trends and development of their ecosystem um, can cause uh, spikes and um, change requests with high spikes activity may indicate a project doesn't provide sufficient checks. So this narrative is part of the starter viability model. And when we look over at the description for change requests, you can see that um, I mean, really, this metric was developed at a time in, during a time when security was not as front and center as it is today, and attention to the software supply chain was not as uh, front and center as it is today. So I think the suggestion is to add some text to to this. And um, I would just uh, ask if anyone, mm -hmm has any thoughts about that or about the text that Don has suggested? It seems reasonable to me, but I don't want to be the only person that says, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it might not be exactly a change request, the low number of change requests, but the a low number in the closet a merge chain request because even if you have a million chain requests, if you never merge, it's fine. I mean, uh, so you can get the the auto how how is called this one from GitHub the the Pendabot had you a ticket every day. Yeah, but that so, doesn't mean that you're tracking security. That that means that you forgot to shut down the bot. So I think it's more about the merged ones. So I think, um, yeah, I think you're right. So the, there's actually two thoughts. Two, I think there's two independent thoughts that Don has here. And I think your point is related to the second one, which is the sentence that says change requests with high spikes of activity might also indicate that a project doesn't provide sufficient checks, blah, blah. And I think what you're suggesting is the, it's the close rate, um, as not so much the count of change requests, right? I don't know if we have one that is because the close rate is isn't uh all closed over open. So I think in this case, if we don't have something that is closed change request, it might be the multiplication of both. Because I think the rate is only how many were merged from how many you had. Yeah. And I think, so I think that the way that this metric is written is that the status is presented as a filter. So oh, yeah, that question about whether it's been open or closed, that would be one that could be answered by simply applying a filter. Um, and probably status should be updated to opened, open, merged and closed, because that's really the way that we look at these things to count to your point. So when something is closed without being merged, that suggests what you're saying. Divya, I see your hand up. Sorry, I just noticed it. Uh, not a problem at all. Uh, so just to give a little more context around this, um, I'm assuming that the way we visualize it is through GitHub. And um, I actually was going to put, a, put forth the same point that a lot of the change requests that go through, um, I mean, some of them just get closed as part of like they just get closed they don't get merged <laughs> so we okay. might want to like have that sort of a filter that's the first thing and the second thing is that um again um i would also uh i mean when i talk about uh change request i would also factor in the age but that's probably a whole different conversation 
uh, uh and probably something that comes in from the um you know if there are too um too many pending change requests sort of the side of things because um i feel like having way too many change requests as well open um in the queue and maybe not in the closed state uh, status um is also a, a good indicator of the fact that maybe the project isn't as viable as we think it is but i think that's a separate uh discussion that's not uh contributing to this one but the first point uh definitely with respect to the merged and the closed thing i think that differentiation definitely needs to be there otherwise um there's a huge possibility we are you know taking into account a lot of red herrings i'm just making a note with a note on that and as i went in uh you probably could see if you're looking at the screen that i went and i forked um the repo to make changes and i can see now that we do have um, change request acceptance rate um, as a as a separate metric that that's indicated here. So it is not as I had recalled it, where where that status on change requests necessarily reflected the whole of these questions. Um, I, I think you have one below that is called change request accepted. I, I think that's the one we're yes. talking. Yeah. So. Oh, it has a count. So. Yeah, it does a count and it does a ratio. Um, I think the count is what we're looking here. Mm -hmm. I mean, not of every change request, but those accepted. Okay. That, that will be the, the suggestion from me at least. Like I have those separated in, in my own metrics. Um, uh, I would look into accepted as real activity. Yep. And let me just take a look real quick here at how, how this starter viability model operationalizes change requests. So they do have closure ratio. Which just points to the change requests definition. So now I'm wondering if the repo is out of date. That's change requests. See change request closure ratio. Hmm. Gosh. Oh, change request acceptance ratio. I, I suppose that must be the metric that's being referred to here, but it is a bit confusing. So I think if I'm hearing the consensus, the, the consensus is that um, when we look at, um, uh, request closure ratio, metric in the model is actually where these definitions might be addressed, right? Because especially the first sentence, although what they're saying here is that a low count of change requests probably means that they aren't keeping up with security, which I suppose is inferred from the absence of like a depend about or something to your earlier point, Damien. I, I think like if you have too few 
uh, chain request, you definitely are going to have, you're implying that you have too few accepted because that's the maximum accepted is how many change requests you get. Uh, but I think what they really mean is the accepted ones, not the change requests. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay. I think that's a, a reasonable dispensation of um of that issue for now. I think I think we need a bit more parsimony on on what being what is being requested there. Um so, Probably next meeting, Don is going to be here. So, yeah, that will clarify everything. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, we'll leave this. Is there anything else that um, folks want to add to the agenda? I don't know. The third few points. We don't have good. Uh, I don't know if actually. feedback on hiring a person is good. Um, does anyone know uh, what that agenda item is from? It might refer to a discussion that we had last week uh, about hiring someone to clear up all the styling, all these things, but I'm not sure. I, I'm not part of that. Uh, I think it was, who was the one working on that? Um, mm -hmm. um, oh, it was Matt Hermon Press. Yeah, the, the yeah. One the, no, this, this, that. that completely, I, I do think I know where Matt is going with this. And I think the idea is that we would use some of the grant funds that we have to pay a person to do some of this metrics cleanup. And that's, yep. that's probably, a, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think anyone would disagree with that help. <laughs> Did yeah, you? I, I think it makes reference to that. Oh, go ahead. We, you can finish your thought, Damien. Yeah. Uh, no, that's it. Okay, Divya. I see your hand. Uh, I'm I'm just wondering um if we are uh looking at somebody to clean up the styling uh um is it is it like a proper proper um uh, you know e it's just an editing job right like a proper yes I think that's yeah. what the task would be effectively so... to create consistency where even in our navigation of the repos and website today we found some inconsistent names right right so what uh what i would um uh, do is probably not hire someone uh i would uh, again i i'm i am just floating this idea why do we not leverage uh like one of the um programs such as outreach or someone to actually uh, to have someone work on it for a period of three to four months like you don't have to hire them you just have to partner with the program and since this is a fairly low level um task i don't think this would be a very um you know have a lot of heavy lifting will not be required of course that person will need to seek inputs from the rest of the community so they will be able to collaborate with us they'll get a taste of open source and we get our work done so i think it really does serve the purpose of us um you know 
as a community welcoming more new members and also that person getting exposed to open source. Again, I don't know if that idea sounds great, but yeah. No, I think I think you make a very good point, and it's it's something that we should look into. Um, we can ask Elizabeth when the community resumes meetings when those deadlines are, um, in the near future. We yeah. I so I do know that Google season of docs uh will be next year. Uh, but outreachy opens applications. Um. Uh, in I think uh August I mean we're in August yeah okay <laughs> so yeah so I think it it opens sometime in mid August if I'm not mistaken because at Chaos Asia we are trying to leverage Outreachy for an other project that we're doing which is cre creating and uh creating a database of open source communities in Asia so we're trying to do that um so we're we're trying to uh, partner with Outreachy but uh we can also float this like a uh, uh, a single organization can have more than one project uh, submitted for sure. So, I mean, if that's something that we'd like to explore, I'm happy to sort of pass on that information. I don't have the exact dates on record right now, but I can definitely pass that information on. I th I think that's that's worth uh, considering. I can I can't tell you the reason that we haven't pursued outreachy in recent years is because the last time we did. We had a thousand applicants for two positions and it made it very, um, it, it created a lot of work for us, but it also, um, you know, with a thousand people applying for a position, it led to some disappointment that we didn't, um, we were just concerned about how the expectations of newcomers were being managed at that time. Um, but outreach is a great program. And I think you have a good suggestion that we should perhaps look back into it now because this would be a, a really good task for an outreachy person wanting to enter open source. I agree with you. And also, I mean, the situation is fairly similar now. I'm not going to lie and tell you that it's it's changed and, you know, everything's become magically okay. It's still pretty yeah. much the same now. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's still worth exploring. And, like, uh, for that singular purpose, I think having, like, um, you know, specific points of contact managing that whole process i know thousand applications is a lot uh but um i i've i've actually gone through google season of docs myself and uh i worked with cern on uh google season of docs for their documentation so the way we could sort of filter them out like application wise is to sort of put them through some sort of um you know test or something like that that's that's what uh, son did with me so i mean we could do that like we could assess based on our preferences um and based on you know the kind of applicants that are coming in like i know it sounds a bit much but also yeah uh, no i mean it's like i think that's a that's a good suggestion and it's worth i think it's surely worth talking about the next time i, I don't I don't think we should dismiss it out of hand like maybe we have done the last year or so. So let's um if you could when you come back when we return to our meetings in a month, if um I think if you could bring that here or perhaps share some of those thoughts in Slack, that would be that would help so, us to yeah, move, around, move along. Can do, not a problem at all. Thank you, Divya. Thank you. I don't I don't uh, have the updates on the template because I don't know what that is and I think it's apparently hidden right now. So is there um, are there any other items that folks want to bring or do you want 25 minutes of your life back? I will now see. nothing either. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, we got uh, two weeks off now, so enjoy the chaos break. Hopefully the rest of the world complies with our break in the chaos. And uh, <laughs> I'll see you, see you in a month. See you in a month. Bye. See you in a month. Bye.